Praise the Lord, saints of God. Glory be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the righteous. Oh, he's the great and mighty one. He's the most excellent one. Oh, he's the victorious one. He's the enthroned one. Oh, glory be to God. The Bible tells us, amen, in Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 19, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven as lightning. He said, all power, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto him. And Acts 10, 38 says he went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Glory be to God. Jesus has all power, all authority in heaven and in earth. And the Bible informs us of what he did with that power. What did he do with that authority? He went about healing all that was oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Jesus don't want nothing having you but him. Amen. He did something about every concern, every situation, every challenge. Amen. That you will ever deal with. Jesus dealt with it all. He's the answer. He's the solution. He's the antidote. He's the remedy to all mankind's concern. He destroyed Satan and all of his cohorts. Amen. He triumphed over him. He made an open show. He defeated the devil. He clobbered him. Glory to God. And he rescued you from all satanic oppression and affliction. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 8, verse 36, whom the son set free is free indeed. And this is how he set you free. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. If you continue in my word, you will be my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Woo! Glory be to God. Jesus wants you free from sickness, disease, worry, depression, anxiety, and fear. He wants you free from every care. Woo! Every concern. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, casting the whole of your care upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All you have to do is come to Jesus and then follow him. Many times we come to Jesus out of what we face and going through, out of our concerns. Amen. But the change really don't happen until we follow him. And the way we follow him is by doing what he say. Woo, Jesus said, why call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? Oh, but when you do what he say, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 26, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto them a wise person which built their house, their marriage, their family, their business, their career, their ministry upon the rock. And when the rain descended and the floods came and beat up against it, what happened? It fell not. Why? Because it was built upon hearing and doing what Jesus say. Every time you do what Jesus say, you win. Woo, glory to God. He reverses the irreversible. Woo, he changes the impossible into possibilities. Woo, glory be to God every time you hear and do what he say. Oh, glory be to God. In Luke chapter 17, verse 11, amen, the Bible records that there were 10 leopards who came to Jesus. They had this incurable disease plaguing them, oppressing them. And when they heard about how Jesus was healing and delivering people, they came to him and requested his help. Woo, glory to God. And he told them, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says, why they went, they were cleansed. Woo, glory. Nobody can do what Jesus say, amen, without winning. Mm. Every time you do what Jesus say, you win. 
Woo, glory to God. Every time you do what Jesus say, he reverses the irreversible. Every time you do what Jesus say, he converts the, the test, the, the, the trial into testimonies and praise reports. You remember in Luke chapter 5, verse 3 through 8, here's Peter and his, his business partners. They out fishing all night, laboring in toil. Amen. And came up empty handed and with nothing. And Jesus told him in Luke 5, verse 3 through 8, launch out into the deep, let iron your net for a drought. And Peter offered up an excuse. He said, we've been out there all night, ain't caught nothing. Amen. But he caught himself. And he said, nevertheless, at your word, we'll launch out into the deep and let down our nets. And the Bible records in verse 6, when they had done this, when they had done what Jesus said, what happened when they did what Jesus said? They enclosed a great number of fish so that their nets began to break. Their boats began to sink. Woo, glory be to God. Oh, when you do what Jesus say. Woo, when he say forgive, you forgive. Amen. When he say pray, you pray. Amen. When he said give, tithe, give offerings, you tithe and give offerings. When he said, don't forsake the assembly of the saints as the manner of some is, you don't forsake. You don't make excuses for not coming to church. Why? Because you do what Jesus say. Amen. Every time you do what he say, he reverses the irreversible. Every time you do what Jesus say, he converts the impossibilities into possibilities. Everyone in the Bible who heard Jesus and did what he say, amen, he converted their tests into testimonies, their trials into triumphs. Amen. Woo. No one in the Bible that did what he said, amen, ended up losing. And you won't be the first one. Mm. Why do you say that, Pastor Mike? Because the Bible tells us, amen, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, that qualifies everybody. Ooh, only thing you got to do is hear what he say and do what he say, and you're going to win. Woo! Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's how you get him on your side, by doing what he say. Woo! Glory to God. See, the change don't come when you come to Jesus. The change happens when you follow him. Mm. Amen. And you can't follow Jesus. Watch this. This is what many Christians miss it at right here. Think they following Jesus and they ain't. But this is where they miss it at, y'all. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23. That's what Jesus said. Whosoever cometh out to me, I followed me. What he got to do in order to follow Jesus? He got to deny himself. Mm. He got to deny himself. You, When he require you to walk in love and to forgive, you got to deny your feelings. You got to deny what people did to you. That can't be more realer than you than what Jesus told you to do. He told you to love your enemy, bless them and pray for them. Give them something to eat when they hungry, something to drink when they thirsty. Woo! Glory to God. And in order to do that, you got to deny yourself and how you feel. Woo! Glory to God. You're doing it unto the Lord, not unto them. Oh, glory to God. Amen. And what you do unto the Lord, amen, that's what he get involved with. Oh, glory to God. Are y'all seeing this today? See, it's not just coming to Jesus. It's coming to him and following him by doing what he say. He had to, he had to uproot that, that fogginess in my mind. You see, I, I was coming to him, but I wasn't following him by doing what he say. Mm. Glory to God. And then when I started doing what he said, amen, I did it with reluctance. Mm. I did it but, uh, wishing it was different. Mm. I did it with argument, mm. with protest, mm. and wishing it was different. And it's, it didn't even count because Jesus looked on the heart. Amen. And the Bible says in Isaiah 1 verse 19, if you be willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. It's not just obedience, but it's will for obedience. I don't have to, I get to. That kind of attitude. 
I get to walk in love. I get to forgive. I get to pay tithes and offerings. I get to serve the Lord. I get to pray. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. If you be willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. See, it's the willfulness. It's the attitude of the heart. It's hearing what Jesus say without protest argument and without wishing it was different. See, Peter had that protest when Jesus told him to launch out into the deep, let out his net for a draw. He had a protest. Lord, we've been out there all night. Ain't caught nothing. But he checked himself. He caught himself. He said, nevertheless, at your word, at your word, we'll let down the net. Whoa, gloat. You got to get rid of that protest argument and wishing it was different. Amen. When you do what Jesus say. Whoa, you got to hear what he say like it's the best way, the only way. Can't be another way. Whoa, glory to God. Why? Because Jesus said, I am the way. I am the life. Whoa, glory to God. So you can't wish what he say is different. Amen. James chapter 1 verse 21. It says, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Underline that word meekness. Receive with meekness. Receive what Jesus say without protest, without argument, and without wishing it was different. Woo! And that's when you get to follow him. Mm. When you hear what he say without protest, argument, and wishing it was different, that's when he get to make you, amen, the head and not the tail, above only and, and not beneath. He get to make you the, the healed instead of the sick, the strong instead of the weak, hallelujah, the rich instead of the poor. Oh, he get to make you glory to God like him. Hallelujah. When you hear and do what he say without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. Man, that's a powerful word right there, y'all. Praise God. I'm so glad you tuned in to Word Encounter tonight. Oh, you in the right place at the right time to receive the right thing from your heavenly father. You are in your appointed place. Hmm. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And the things that God has appointed you will be possessed and handled and received by you tonight. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Well, saints of God, amen. I want to appreciate all of you. Amen. All of our partners, all of our members, ministers, and leaders, all of our friends around the world. We just so appreciate you. And amen, we invoke increase, expansion, growth, and greatness upon you. In the name of Jesus, increase come up on you tonight. According to Psalms 115, verse 14, the Lord will increase you more and more, you and your children, in 2024. No one of you will miss your portion or your place, amen, in this prophetic year of increase. You will have your own testimony, your own praise report of the Lord increasing you more and more. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, amen. We've been having some exciting services at the church. Amen. Sunday, last Sunday, we dealt with a series of teaching called, amen, uh, 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 continuing beyond temptation, continuing beyond temptation. You know, many times you got to understand the importance of continuance. Continuance doesn't begin until you're tempted not to. The Bible tells us in Galatians 6 verse 9, don't grow weary in doing well. Because in due season, in due season, you have a due season, amen, a due season of blessing, a due season of healing, a due season of financial breakthroughs, a due season of favor. Woo, glory to God. But the condition of receiving it is not to faint, not to faint. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 13, he that endured to the end shall be saved. Are you seeing this? Amen. So I have to receive grace for continuance, grace for continuance, grace for continuance. Amen. Glory to God. I got to make it to the end. Glory to God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, 
Amen. Verse 38, we are not of those who draw back unto perdition, but we are those who believe unto the saving of our soul. You got to make it to the end. Many people start out, but they don't make it to the end. Amen. They don't endure beyond temptation. Amen. Glory to God. So you got to understand how important continuance is. Amen. Go back and listen to Sunday series of teaching. Because so many Christians, we're we're at we're finishing up, Amen. The month of of July, glory. We made it to the end of July. The Lord has kept us, preserved us, and sustained us. Woo, glory to God. Now we're entering in to the latter part of this year. Glory to God. And the Lord spoke to us Sunday. He gave us a prophecy concerning the former and the latter coming together. Woo, glory to God. What is the former and the latter? That means that the, the, the former is, is things that you forfeited and lost. Things that were denied and stolen mm, that you've yet to receive. Woo, glory to God. Amen. And the latter are things that you are believing for that are yet to happen, that God has packaged this year with for you. Woo. Amen. Glory to God. And if you will receive this grace, amen, to continue in the word, to continue in love, to continue in prayer, to continue in the spirit, to continue, amen, in giving of thanks, the latter and the former going to meet up in the month of August. Woo! And you're going to ride this year out on a high note, on a wave of glory. Hallelujah. And Jesus is going to change your story. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Are you seeing this today? Mm. Praise the Lord. Man, I'm glad we tuned in to Word Encounter tonight. Woo, boy, the Spirit of God. Woo, he's here tonight. Amen. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty for you tonight. Jesus wants to liberate you from everything that has incarcerated you. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is word encounter hour. This is the hour that God has ordained for us to have an encounter with him through his word for a change of story. So go get your Bibles, get you a pen and a notepad. So as we refer to scriptures, you can follow along, write these scripture references down. And in days to come, you can go back over them, strengthen, fortify, build up your faith, drive and starve out all your doubts. Jesus got a word for you. Mm. I said, Jesus has a word for you. Amen. See, you have to come to the conclusion that there is one thing that answers everything, and that's the word of God. All you need is a word. I said, all you need is a word. All you need is a word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. When you get the word, you get God, you get Jesus, you get the Holy Ghost, you get the grace. Amen. You get the power. Woo, glory be to God. When you get the word, you get it all. Woo, glory to God. Amen. So you got to tend to your appetite for the word. Amen. Or else it'll get contaminated. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, men should not live by bread alone, but by every word, but by every word, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, what are you feeding on? Mm. Glory to God. Amen. I remember the Lord spoke to me, amen, two days ago. What was it? Sunday night. Amen. He spoke to me. I was getting ready to sit down and watch the news a little bit. And the Lord said to me, he said, is that, is that the best use of your time? Ooh, -wee. man, is that the best use of your time? Mm. And I got to thinking, I said, no, it ain't the best use. Amen. Glory to God. And I began to see 
that he was required. He see he was drawing, he was drawing me to him. See, the Bible says in Isaiah 55, amen, verse 6, seek the Lord while he can be found. Call upon him while he is near. He can be found anytime. He's near every time. But there are certain times and seasons and moments that are favorable. Mm. Where he draw up on you. He call you to him. Mm. And you got to be sensitive to yield. Because that, that time, he want to show, show you some, He want to do something unusual, rare, extraordinary for you. He ain't trying to condemn you by telling you not to watch that. You know, hey, you know, ain't nothing wrong with the news except when the Lord tell you to do something different. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. And he drew me into prayer. He drew me in the word. And I began to see things in the word and in prayer that I never would have saw. I've been looking to him and inquiring him concerning these things. And he opened them up to me. Why? Because he established, appointed a favorable moment. Mm. Amen. He asked me, is that the best use of your time? Ooh. Glory to God. See, he got me interested. He woke up an interest in me. Ooh, glory to God. Amen. And I cut that TV off, came in my prayer closet, got in my word, and he opened up heaven to me. Who showed me great and mighty things which I did not know. Oh, glory to God. See, you got to be sensitive when the Lord move on you. See, he said it in Luke 9, 23. Amen. If you follow him, if you come after him, there'll be times where you have to deny yourself. Man, I'm supposed to be talking about the ministry of angels tonight. And here we are. Wait, man, the Lord is speaking to somebody. Amen. Glory to God. You, 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 you got to understand. Amen. Jesus is trying to win you away from you. Mm. Amen. He told me one time, he said, son, when you're ministering salvation to people, he said, be mindful that I'm, I'm on a mission to save them from three people. I said, what? He said, yeah. He said, I'm on a mission to save them from the devil. I'm on a mission to save them from themselves, and I'm on a mission to save them from the world. Mm. Woo! I ain't never saw that before. Amen? Save you from the devil. Save you from yourself. Amen? And save you from the world, from depending upon it as your source. Woo! Glory be to God. That's what salvation consists of. Amen. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let's get into this word. We're talking on a series of teaching called The Ministry of Angels. The Ministry of Angels. The Ministry of Angels. Amen. Glory to God. This is a powerful ministry, you all. Amen. This ministry, amen, was provided by the Lord to give him access to you to put the super on your natural, to reverse the irreversible, and to make possible the impossible. Oh, glory. Did y'all get that? I said, did you get that? I said, this ministry, the ministry of the angels, was provided by the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Woo, glory to God. To, to put the super on your natural. Woo, glory to God. Amen. To make what's impossible possible and to reverse the irreversible. Oh, glory be to God. Every time you see this ministry employed, the ministry of the angels, it's always bringing the super on the natural, heaven to earth. Oh, glory to God. It's always making the impossible possible. Amen. And it's always reversing the irreversible. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. Now, this ministry of the angels have always exist since the beginning of time. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And, and even in the Old Testament, amen, this ministry was employed. 
as well as in Jesus' ministry and in the New Testament. Oh, glory to God. Amen. You can see in the Old Testament in Exodus 23, verse 20 through 25, he's talking to the children of Israel and he's telling them, hey, I'm assigned to an angel. He's the angel of the covenant. Amen. Obey his voice. Follow him. He's trying to do something for you. He's trying to take you somewhere that I have appointed you. Oh, glory to God. Amen. We see it in Jesus' ministry. Amen. Glory to God. They, they introduced his ministry. Amen. With Mary and, 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 and Joseph, his parents. Amen. In Luke uh, chapter 1. Amen. Verse 26 through 38. The angel Gabriel came to, 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 to Mary, Jesus' mother, and to Joseph, Jesus' father. Woo, glory to God. And introduced his birth to them. Mm, glory be to God. Amen. And then you see this ministry in the, in the New Testament. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says, Amen. The angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who should be heirs of salvation. Mm. Glory to God. So they had to rely on this ministry in the Old Testament. Jesus had to rely on this ministry and we have to rely on it too. Amen. But many Christians being ignorant and having no knowledge or an inaccurate knowledge of this ministry. Amen. They do without many things that God has programmed. Amen. And provided for them in Christ. Because so much Amen. Glory to God is connected to these angels involvement in your life that without their assistance and without their ministry, we will do without forfeit or lose what God had provided for us in Christ. Woo! Glory to God. So we're going to discuss, amen, three points in this series of teaching on the ministry of angels. Number one, we're going to look at, amen, who are the angels of God? Who are the angels of God? Because there's good angels and bad. Amen. Remember when Lucifer was kicked out of heaven, he took three, two thirds of the angels with him. He took a third of the angels with him. So there's good angels and evil angels. Who are the angels of God? Just because you saw something supernatural, that don't mean it was from God. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 11 that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. Mm. Woo! Glory. Can y'all see this? Then number two, we're going to look at, amen, what this ministry of the angels consists of. What does this ministry consist of? What is God doing through this ministry? Amen. One of the things he does through this ministry is to protect you mm, and deliver you. We see it in Psalms 91, verse 12. Amen. He gives his angels charge over you. Amen. Glory to God to keep you. Amen. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. Mm, glory to God. And many Christians do without deliverance and safety. Amen. Because they have no knowledge of this ministry. Or their knowledge of this ministry is not biblically. It's supernatural. I mean, uh, not supernatural, but what do you call it? Uh, superstitious. Mm. Glory to God. This is powerful, y'all. Because you got to understand, Revelations chapter 12 talks about the devil knowing that his time is short. Mm. Romans chapter 16, verse 20, Paul talking to the church of Rome, he said, and the God of all grace will bruise Satan under your feet shortly. See, the devil know he has a short time to deceive, kill, steal, and destroy people. He know that. Amen. So he, he, he's heaping up his attacks. Amen. And, and, and this is why you see so many evil things coming to pass real fast. Used to it take a long time for this kind of level degree of evil to happen. But man, things are happening evil fast. 
Well, if things can happen evil fast, things can happen good fast. Woo, glory. Because God has a ministry called the ministry of angels that have been sent forth to minister for those who should be heirs of salvation. Woo, glory to God. They can make some things happen fast for us. <laughs> but we got to know how. And that, that's our last point, point number three. How to work alongside with them. How to participate and cooperate with them in their endeavors Amen. To fulfill their ministry to us. Mm. There are certain things you can do to cooperate with them, to participate with them. And we're going to learn what these things are. One of them is by watching what you say. Woo! Glory be to God. Remember there in Luke chapter 12, verse 89, Jesus said, Amen. Glory to God that 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 uh, whosoever denied me before man, I would deny them before the Father and, watch this, the angels of God. Woo! Glory to God. So when you speak contrary to God, contrary to Jesus, man, you hinder these angels and their ministry to deliver you and to keep you. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. When you talk sickness, defeat, poverty, lack, struggle, it's hard. Man, you talking contrary to Jesus. Mm. Woo! Man, boy, this is good, y'all. But when I talk, I'm more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Glory to God. His, his help. Amen. He's helping me. He's strengthening me. And he's upholding me. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. My God has supplied all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Jesus took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses when he died on the tree. These symptoms in my body are lying symptoms. They are lying. The truth is God sent his word and healed and delivered me. So I'm going to continue you in the truth and the truth gonna continue to set me free Woo, glory now the angels will cooperate with me and manifest that cause me to come into possession to that with that oh glory to god are y'all hearing me tonight this is a powerful word if i were you i'll call the facebook partner neighbor friend loved one get them hooked on to this because see the enemy can't destroy you except he got three ways he used to destroy people, to kill and steal from them. Number one is ignorance. Hosea 4, 6, God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. In this particular ministry, lack of knowledge of the ministry of angels. Amen. Can y'all see this? Number two, amen, wrong relationships. Amen. The company you keep determines what accompanies you. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. He that keeps company with the wise, amen, shall be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. You got to watch the company you keep because the company you keep determines what accompanies you. Mm. Paul said in Galatians 5, 7, you did run well, but who hindered you? Mm. Glory to God. And then number three, wrong choices. That's what the devil used to destroy you. Wrong choices. And this, this is the area people make wrong choices in the most, particularly Christians, y'all. Amen. They, they, they make excuses for not coming to church. Woo! Man. I said they make excuses for not coming to church. They forsake the assembly of the saints like Hebrews 10, 25 as the manner of some is. He said, don't do that. Don't do like the manner of some is. But as you see that appointed day coming, you should be so much the more ready to engage it. Now, why does that have to do with the ministry of angels? Missing church, coming to church. What does that have to do with the ministry of the angels? I'm going to show you. Look there with me to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12. Let's pick it up in verse 22. Woo, 
man, boy, I tell you, this is word encounter hour. And see, many Christians, they don't want to hear this kind of, I, I, no, I, I, Lord, forgive me for saying, see, I got to, I had to repent. People do want to hear this. Amen. Glory to God. See, you can't talk how you feel. You can't do that. See how the Holy Ghost quick and quick, quickly corrected me? Before I even got it out, he, he corrected me. He said, don't say that. Mm. Ooh, glory to God. Amen. People do want to hear this. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. Because people want help. They want answers. They want the truth. They want Jesus. They want God. They want to be liberated and set free. So they do want to hear this. Amen. See, if you don't catch yourself, you ain't even trying. Mm. Glory to God. Now watch this. Notice here in, 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 in Hebrews chapter 12, look at verse 22. Verse 22. Amen. But you have come to Mount Zion up on to the city of the living God. Watch this. Watch this. To the heavenly Jerusalem. He's talking about attending church. Amen. Glory to God. To an innumerable company of angels. Woo! Are you seeing this? That atmosphere is charged and attended to with an innumerable company of angels. God has assigned the vast number of his angels to that assembly, to that church, to that setting. Mm. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. And this is the place many Christians make the wrong choice. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. Where attending church is concerned. Amen. You, you come into a a, 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 an innumerable company of angels. That's what I think about when I'm tempted not to come to church. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be separated. I'm going to be in a different place than these innumerable in company of angels are going to be. I'm going to be separated from whom God has sent to minister to me. Oh, I want to be in that assembly. I want to be in that place. Whoa. Because in that place, the super is coming up on my natural. The, 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 the irreversible is being reversed. Woo, glory be to God. And that which is impossible is being made possible. Woo, why? Because when I come into the assembly of the saints, I'm coming into the company of an innumerable company of angels. You can't even number them. Whew. Glory to God. But see, many Christians... They, you know, their knowledge of coming to church is not biblical. Amen. So they're easily tempted not to come. Mm. But you got to let the Bible describe to you. Amen. Glory to God. What that setting is, is like. Amen. And who's there. Woo. And what to expect to receive. Oh, glory. I like going to church like I go to the grocery store. I know what I'm there for. Ooh, glory to God. Why? Because I let the Bible inform me of what's there. I let the Bible inform me of what to expect. I let the Bible inform me of what to receive. Ooh, glory be to God. Are you seeing this today? Now, amen. Oh boy, this is good, y'all. This is so, so, so good. Amen. Now, let's look at this ministry. Amen. Glory to God. The ministry of the angels of God. Because the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, that the angels of God are sent forth. They are assigned to minister for those who should be heirs of salvation. And that's why you need to get born again. If you're not saved, that's why you need to get saved. Amen. Because this ministry belongs to those who are born again, who shall be heirs of salvation. So, so it's unsafe to be unsaved. Amen. It's safe to be saved. Amen. And it's unsafe to be unsaved. Why? Because you don't have this ministry. Oh, glory to God. Amen. And it's certain things that, that the Lord does for you and to you through this ministry. So it's vital that you get saved. 
Amen. So, amen, this ministry, amen, can be received by you. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. And then if you're, if you're not, if you're saved and you're living in sin, amen, it's vital that you repent. Mm, glory to God. Amen. Look at Luke 15. Luke 15. Amen. Ver you, you activate this ministry when you repent. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. And to repent means to change your mind for the better. To change your mind for the better. Mm, glory to God. See, sin is when you know to do something and refuse to do it. That's sin. James chapter 4, verse 17. Amen. Him that know to do right and don't do right, that's sin. And see, if you continue in that, if you continue in that, see, this ministry of the angels, they can't continue with you. They got to stop right there. Mm. Woo! Cause they can't they can't live or exist in darkness. They can't they can't uh 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 how you, they can't condone that. Mm. But when you repent, when you change your mind for the better, woo, when you turn back to Jesus and acknowledge him and his blood that he shared on that cross for that sin and the consequences and penalties of it, when you turn away from that back to him, let me show you what happened. The Bible says in Luke chapter 15, amen, verse 10, the angels of God, what they do, they rejoice when when one sinner repents, woo, why? They get to go back to work in providing safety for you, in delivering you, in helping you to receive your promised blessings, in putting the super on your natural, reversing the irreversible, and making possible the impossibilities. Woo, glory be to God. Are y'all seeing this today? Man, this is so powerful. Amen. Woo, glory be to God. Amen, 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 amen. I remember when the Lord showed me this. Amen. On June the 4th, 2024. It was on a Tuesday. Amen. The Lord pulled me over. And he told me, he said, pull over and write this down. I was driving. I found me a Starbucks. And I pulled over. And he began to download this ministry. Amen. He's done it before, but... He, 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 he showed me things, mysteries and secrets that I did not see and know. And he unlocked them. And he showed me about this ministry. Amen. And he told me, he said, Satan know that his time is short. Mm. So he's heaped up evil in his attacks. Amen. And notice he's not attacking the world. He's attacking the church. Amen. Glory to God. Look at 1 Corinthians 16, verse 9. It says, for a door uh, of opportunity for effectual service has opened for you. But yet there are many adversaries. Every opportunity, every blessing, every breakthrough, amen, has to, you have to deal with adversaries. Amen. And apart from this ministry of the angels, it's difficult, it's hard. It's strenuous dealing with adversaries. Why? Because God has employed this ministry to minister to you. Those of us who are heirs of salvation. Those of us who have repented and turned back to the Lord. Amen. We have at our disposal this ministry of the angels. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah! Glory be to God. Amen. Now, now, who, who are the angels of God? This is what we're going to cover tonight. And then next week, we're going to cover our second point, what this ministry consists of. So, amen, pay strict attention. Amen. What does this ministry consist of? And then number three, how to cooperate and participate with the angels of God in them delivering their ministry. We have to cooperate and participate with them. Amen. All right. Now, look here with me. Who are the angels of God? Go here with me to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Who are the angels of God? Psalms 103. Let's pick it up in verse 20 and 21. Who are the angels of God? Look here with me to Psalms 103, verse 20 and 21. 
Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength. Woo! Man, they got divine strength. Amen. Second Peter chapter 2, I think it's around in verse 11. Amen. It talks about the angels excel in strength. Glory to God. And then right here, it says they excel in strength. Excel in strength. Amen. That do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, ye his hosts, you ministers of his that do his pleasure. So these angels have been assigned by God to do his pleasure. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, the Bible says all things were created to give him pleasure. Oh, glory to God. Philippians 2, amen, verse, verse 13. It says that, that, that it is he who is at work within you, both willing and doing of his good pleasure. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So these, these angels have been assigned by God to assist you in doing his pleasure. Glory be to God. And they, they got some divine strength. Woo, glory to help you, to assist you with. Oh, glory be to God. Who are the angels of God? Look there in Psalms 104. Amen. Let's pick it up in verse 4. Amen. Who maketh his angels spirit, his ministers flames of fire. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. So these angels are ministering spirits that have been sent forth to minister to those who should be heirs of salvation. Oh, they have been sent by God to put the super on your natural, to reverse the irreversible, and to make possible what's impossible. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Woo, glory to God. Amen. You know, we're going to get into this Nick next week, how these angels were used to, 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 to divinely care and to protect you, mm. to deliver you, to help you obtain promised blessings. Amen. Glory to God. And to guide you into your breakthrough. Mm. I was looking at it in, in, in Genesis 24, uh, verse 7, where, you know, Isaac, amen, Abraham was believing uh, for his son, Isaac, for his wife, Rebecca, amen, and he told his servant, he said, go into this certain city and, and, and go by the well, and, and the first girl that come up, she going to ask you, she going to tell you, amen, that she going to ask you for the water, and she going to give you some water for your cattle, and, and he said, that's, that's my son's wife. And the, and the servant asked Abraham, how am I going to know? And he said, the angel, my angel is going to go before you. Woo! And he going to help you. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. So those of you who are believing for a career, a business, a ministry, amen, or some breakthrough, I'm telling you, this ministry has been assigned to assist you. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, boy, this is so powerful. Amen. Glory be to God. Like I said, this ministry has always been employed from the Old Testament to Jesus to the New. The book of Acts is loaded with encounters with angels. Amen. Glory to God. Delivered Peter out of prison. Amen. Glory to God. Stood with Paul in the shipwreck in Acts 27, verse 20 through 25, when all hope of living was gone. Neither star, no moon appeared. Amen. All hope was to live was gone and taken away. But what happened? There stood by me an angel of God, or whose I am and who I serve. What did this angel do? He said, Paul, glory to God, don't fear. Woo, glory to God, none of your lives will be lost. Not even a hair on your head will be touched. 
Woo! Glory be to God. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Now, what if Paul didn't have knowledge of this ministry? Amen. And the angel showed up to deliver him. Amen. He wouldn't have never cooperated and participated, and they would have been lost at sea. Mm. Are y'all seeing this? So much of the time, many Christians are destroyed, defeated. Amen. And go without because they have no knowledge or their knowledge of this ministry is inadequate. Mm. Oh, man. Praise God. This is going to be good, y'all. Amen. Now, who are the angels of God? They are ministering spirit, spirits sent forth to minister for those who should be heirs of salvation, according to Hebrews 1, verse 14. Now, there are evil, good angels, and there's evil angels. Amen. Look there in Jude, Jude, Jude chapter 1. Look at, look at verse 6. Jude chapter 1, verse 6. Let's break this down. Jude is back by Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. And he says, and the angels which kept not their first estate, watch this, but left their own habitation. He has reserved in the everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of that great day. See, when Lucifer in, 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 uh, in uh, Ezekiel 28 and in Isaiah 14, see, he got kicked out of heaven. And he came to the earth and he brought two third, a third of the angels with him to assist him in his endeavors to kill, steal, and destroy. So there are good angels and there are evil angels. Amen. Look there in Matthew 25. Amen. Verse 31. Jesus talks about his angels. In Matthew 25, verse 31, the Bible says, Amen. In verse 31, Jesus said, and when the Son of Man shall come in all his glory and all the holy angels with him. Notice, notice, there should be his throne up in glory. So Jesus, his angels going to come with him. These are holy angels, good angels. Look there in that same chapter, Matthew 25. Look at verse 41, verse 41. Then shall he say, Unto them that are on the left, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for who? The devil and his angels. Amen. Are you seeing this? Amen. Look there. Look there in, in, in uh, where is that? Second Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Amen. Now notice what, what Paul said here. Amen. Uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 11. Amen. Talking about the angels of Satan. Notice verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself, verse 14, is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is of no great thing of his ministry also be transformed, notice this, into ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. So are y'all seeing this? So Satan, he tried to transform himself into an angel of light. And that's why you, you got to have knowledge of this ministry because you can be dealing with an evil angel and think it's God. Look here with me to Galatians chapter 1. Let's pick it up in verse 8 and 9. Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Paul said, though we are an angel of heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have heard preached unto you, let him be accursed. Can you see this? So angels will try... Satan's angels would try to transform themselves into an angel of light and try to preach the gospel to you. Man, Ooh, boy, so much deception, y'all. Mm, that's why you have to be a student of the word. Amen. And you got to stay filled with the spirit. Mm, 
You got to stay out of unforgiveness. You got to stay out of offense. Amen. See, unforgiveness and offense, it take you out of the word and out of the spirit. It gets you looking for another other than Jesus. You remember in Matthew chapter 11, starting in verse 2, all the way down to verse 6, uh, verse 8. Remember John the Baptist? He, he, he introduced Jesus' ministry in the earth. Amen. In John chapter 3, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John acknowledged Jesus as the one sent from God. He said, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming after me, mightier than I, who going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. But yet when he got in a test and trial and got put in prison, you see, he got in offense with Herod. He got the, you know, challenging him with who to marry. And, 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 and it wasn't even his business. He got the meddling and, and, and telling him he couldn't marry the girl and, and so forth and all that. And they locked him up, put him in prison for getting into politics. The Bible said, pray for your leaders. Amen. Pray for those that are in authority. Who glory to God. 1 Timothy 2, for all men and all those that are in authority. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 through 4, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. John the Baptist wasn't praying for it. He was contending, condemning the man. It'd been all right if he went to him and, 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 and showed him the truth and then showed him Jesus the way out, but he went to him and just locked him up in what he did, condemning him. See, that's what happened with Christians. Amen. They bring up other problems with other Christians, but they don't bring up a way to make it right. That's condemning them. If you ain't going to bring up the solution and the way of escape and the way to make it right, might as well just keep praying rather than mentioning it to them. Mm. So he got in offense and he sent his disciples to Jesus. Jesus, uh, to ask Jesus, is he the one to come or do we look for another? And Jesus sent the same disciples back to him and told him, said, look, tell John the Baptist, the, the, the blind are sinned, the gospel is being preached, the dead are being raised, the sick are being healed, the lame are walking. But tell him this, blessed are they who are not offended in me. Ooh, see that boy got in offense. And he could have got delivered and set free, just like Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail, just like Peter when he was in the jail in Acts chapter 12, verse 6. The angel came and woke him up and walked him out right out of that prison. He could have had the same assistance, the same ministry at his disposal. But he got in offense, got in unforgiveness. Woo! Stay away from that, y'all. Amen. Man, my time is up. We're going to have to get back into this next week. All right. Y'all be praying for me. Amen. Glory to God. I really appreciate your prayers. They really making a difference in our lives and in the ministry. Amen. Also, I want to give you an opportunity to give into this ministry. Amen. Many people are really receiving from this ministry, but they're not giving into the ministry. Amen. Had it not been for our members and those who are, who are connected to the ministry, amen, glory to God, we could never accomplish, amen, the magnitude of ministry that we're doing. But, we, but there's so much more to do, saints, so much more to do. Amen. Glory to God. Let's be, amen, participators and not spectators so we can be partakers. Amen. Turn there to Galatians 6. And while you're turning there, look at the information on your screen. It'll show you how to give and how to sow your seed into the ministry. Amen. Glory to God. Now, notice there in Galatians 6, verse 6. It says, let him that is taught in the word do what? Communicate with his teacher. The Amplified Version says, contribute to his financial support. Mm. You know you're being taught in the word. Many of you, you're seeing things in the word that you never saw before. Amen. This ministry is really a, a beacon of light and hope to you. Amen. You know some of you, you can do way better than what you're doing. Mm. I'm asking you to change your mind for the better. Whew. Glory to God. 
Because the Bible says, what a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Mm. And then he goes into verse 8, and he says, He that sowed to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit, under Spirit he'll reap life everlasting. Sow your best seed tonight. Amen. Glory to God. The information to give is on your screen. Amen. Help us in all of our outreach endeavors. We're getting ready to start another uh, year, a new year at the academy, at the school. Amen. Our faculties and teachers are in uh, in service preparing for this school year this week. They already done came on, on campus, already came. Amen. And are engaged to minister another supernatural service from the Lord to the children and the families at the academy. Amen. Glory to God. Well, let's pray over you giving. Father, I thank you for these who will give tonight. Thank you that their giving is an expression of their love for you and their love for the works and the people that you are servicing in the earth. Thank you that because they partnered with you in your endeavors to save the lost, heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, and set the captive free. Thank you, Father that the good that they made happen for others, they'll receive that same good from you. Now let the spirit of wisdom showing them what to do per time. Let the spirit of faith to overcome every obstacle and barrier and to receive from you. And let divine favor come up on them, doing what only you can do. Let it come up on them this week to produce increased testimonies and praise reports in their life. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and given thanks. Amen. Well, we're going to be coming back this Thursday night, our midweek service and Bible study. Please refer to the Facebook page, amen, on what's happening at Abundant Life Christian Center Ministry. One of our staff members, she's taking it up on herself to make sure that we're adequately informed with the events and services, things that are happening at the ministry. Amen. And then also share this word with others. Get this word out. Be a word supplier. Amen. Give God access to your loved ones, to your relatives, your co-workers and friends. I appreciate all of you. Amen. Your partnership, your prayers, your love, your support. And I invoke the blessing of God, the blessing of increase upon you. And until we see you again, it's our prayer that God's richest and best be yours.